So in this section we will start with the concept of a network. Uh, the network is basically a collection of some objects called nodes. We can represent these objects in the form of dots in a plane and we can also give them some labels uh, to identify them better. And uh, in addition to this set of objects, we also have some another set of objects which represent associations between these nodes. Uh, these associations are popularly known as edges. So the idea is that different real world systems, um, examples could be traffic systems, social systems in the form of maybe social uh, connectivity, uh, roads, air, ra railways and airlines and in the form of maybe let's suppose communication systems, all these different types of you can say systems um, which are quite complex in nature they could be simplified by this representation of a network okay so this uh, network will consist of the different nodes uh, and edges and uh, these nodes and edges are actually going to be coming from the system so you have some entities identified over here which are going to be translated to these nodes and you have some relationships uh, between these entities which are going to be translated into these uh, edges over here. So the idea is that since the system is really quite complex, okay, so we may not be able to, you can say, um, uh, understand what's happening in such systems. But since we can represent these systems by an equivalent network, we could be looking at some possibilities over here. And these possibilities could be come represented in the form of problems. Okay, and these problems, once they are formulated, we can then apply some kind of algorithms to solve those problems. And by solving those problems, we could indirectly represent the behavior which is occurring inside the systems. So we could look at a befitting example uh, to um, represent our description and we could take the case of an analog based telephone switching network. So here we can identify some entities in the form of telephone devices and uh, switches and of course these switches will have some kind of uh, you can say associations between them okay so just these associations will represent that which switch is currently connected to another switch and if we have a through link from a de telephone A towards a telephone B we will have a telephone uh, call which is taking place and of course there will be some details internal details of how a switch operates but that switching detail is not relevant to us because we are only looking at a kind of a black box uh, based model of our uh, telephone based system this is because this topological representation may be able to uh, give us solutions to the problems which we are looking at but if we <coughs> increase the um, size of the network to perhaps represent the uh, graph of the internet we will see that uh, it is not the, 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 the network model which we which we obtained before may not be suitable in this case in the sense that the graph is now so complex in the sense that um, it's completely unregulated uh, there will be frequent topological changes in the graph and the total uh, order of the graph in the form of the number of nodes will be uh, on the scale of billions of web pages. So if you want to have uh, solutions uh, to questions like uh, what would be the maximum number of clicks required to go from one page to another, we could represent these clicks in the sense that they originate at a page over here in A. Uh, and they have to go uh, all the way to uh, B in the sense that there will be frequent uh, jumps involved and we're simply referring to the point that how uh, many hops would be required to go from uh, page A to page B. <coughs> so in this case, since the network is so large, 
we do not have the luxury to represent the uh, graph in the kind of a regular uh, so uh, we don't have the luxury to represent the internet in the form of a regular graph and in the sense we have to uh, look at alternative representations of the network and that would be using uh, some, some 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 concept known as random graphs okay so basically the answer to the question the original question what would be the diameter of this graph well the answer given in this paper by Albert Abbasi is uh, 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 19. So continuing further, we could look at some other example applications and one of the most common application which comes to uh, our daily use is the um, map uh, mapping uh, utility available on our mobile phones, uh, commonly available in the form of Google Maps and other uh, map based software. So basically inside the software we are interested to give it uh, two points uh, A and B and we are interested to find out uh, minimum uh, cost uh, uh, distance between these two points and we may be interested to look at some additional constraints so for example we may want it to be a minimum distance, minimum time, minimum congestion and so on and so forth. And amongst the different options which are available to us, we can choose one of the options and discard the rest of the solutions which have been provided to us. Okay, so um, the representation of a graph inside maps is not immediately obvious in the sense that the graph is implicitly hidden inside the details and these details can be represented in the form of junctions or important localities this could be represented as vertices or nodes and the road uh, connectivity between those important localities can be represented as edges so we could have a very complex kind of uh, graph which is hidden inside the detailed information or the det detailed data which is available to us and the finding the minimum cost um, uh, uh, answer uh, to the distance between point A and B could then uh, require the usage of algorithms like Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm or the heuristic based A star algorithm and considering that the size of the network may be too large we may considering some pre-processing kind of operation known as contraction hierarchies where if we are interested to find out the distance between uh, the uh, uh, position A and D on a graph like this being equivalent to 3 we can simply have a minimal representation uh, as A and D over here and knowing that the cost of uh, uh, the distance is 3 we could directly substitute 3 over here so the the ability to uh, find out this distance in this graph has been in three steps and the ability to find out the same distance over here as 3 has been carried out in one step so a contraction operation basically sees if there are some nodes along the path which are not really contributing towards the uh, uh, route discovery process we can basically uh, get rid of them and substitute them with uh, some alternative kind of arrangement in which uh, uh, contraction type of operation has taken place we could also look at the possibilities that maybe some frequently uh, searched routes could be pre-computed so anybody who is uh, giving uh, those uh, details will simply be retrieving the information from 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 a kind of a cache rather than computing the uh, uh, shortest path every time so another example could be and this is actually a very frequently used application of graphs in the form of social networks so basically a social network it represents uh, some some information about connectivity of human beings uh, on popular social platforms like Facebook, Google, LinkedIn and so on and so forth and the connectivity information can then be used to uh, serve a lot of uh, additional value addition uh, value addition services like maybe you can have some kind of uh, targeted marketing or, or maybe you could look at some behavior profiling and so on and so forth so uh, social network based representation uh, as a graph is a quite uh, frequently used application 
uh, of graph theory. So there are many other um, so there are many other applications um, uh, of graph theory. Uh, the amount of these applications will not be possible to uh, mention in this short period of time. But basically, what we uh, conclude from these applications is that in many cases you will have data, and this data will allow us to construct uh, uh, networks. And in, if the data is not available, or maybe in supplement to the data, we could also try to understand uh, how systems uh, are uh, connected to one another, and the same type of networks could be constructed on the basis of that information. So a network is basically a model, uh, and this model is basically constructed with the help of graph theory. And as I mentioned in the previous uh, slides, uh, that uh, we could uh, then add, add to attribute some kind of problems and uh, so extract solutions to those problems on the basis of different types of algorithms.